The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. An artificial dielectric made from an array of conducting spheres demonstrates how polarization of media gives rise to the properties of a linear dielectric. When the region between electrodes is filled with a dielectric material, the capacitance is increased. This increase is due to polarization of molecules of the material. We form an appreciation for how this happens by replacing the molecules with macroscopic spheres suspended in air. This artificial dielectric is composed of what we can think of as molecules that are actually essentially perfectly conducting spheres. Each has radius r, and they're in a cubic array with spacing s. application of voltage to the electrodes results in the spheres acquiring positive and negative surface charges on their poles. In addition to the uniform field due to the applied voltage, the field outside the spheres also includes the dipole fields from the array of spheres. The spheres, like the molecules of a material, are polarized by an applied field. The artificial dielectric is composed of an array of ping pong balls with conducting coatings. We're going to measure the effective permittivity by measuring the change in capacitance as the array is placed between the plates of this plane parallel plate capacitor. The cage is grounded for shielding and to keep us from touching the bottom electrode. It's driven to 400 volts RMS at 250 hertz by this transformer, which is itself driven by an oscillator and amplifier. Here's the top electrode. To avoid fringing effects, only the charge induced on this central section will be measured when we measure the capacitance. Here's how the dielectric is inserted between the plates. This is a picture of the experiment. Here's the transformer driving the lower electrode. Here's the top plate connected to one side of a differential amplifier. Because the spacing between spheres is more than two diameters, the increase in capacitance caused by the spheres is small. To measure the small change in capacitance that results from inserting the array, the parallel plate capacitor is in one leg of a bridge. These capacitors are in the other legs of the bridge. It helps to draw the circuit like this. Here are the ping pong balls. These capacitors are those of the balanced amplifiers on the scope. So the oscilloscope displays the output voltage, V sub zero. With the array removed, this capacitor, C sub two, is adjusted to null the output voltage, V sub zero. The output voltage resulting from the insertion of the array is a measure of the change in capacitance. To simplify the interpretation of this voltage, the resistances R sub S are made small compared to the impedance of the parallel plate capacitor. They're 100 kilo ohms. As a result, almost all of the applied voltage V from the transformer 
appears across the lower legs of the bridge. With the introduction of the array, there's a change in current through the parallel plate capacitor. This results in a change in current in the resistance in the right leg, and hence a change of voltage across the resistance. Because the current through the left leg has remained essentially the same, this change in voltage is the measured output voltage. With many widely spaced and therefore non-interacting spheres, the effective susceptibility and the change in capacitance caused by inserting the array between the plates are given by these expressions. Remember, R is the radius of a ping pong ball, and S is the spacing between balls. A is the active area of an electrode, and D is the spacing. So this is the capacitance without the array. The radius of the ping pong balls is 1.87 centimeters. The spacing S is eight centimeters. The electric susceptibility is then 0.16. This means that the relative permittivity is 1.16. To compute the resulting change in capacitance, we multiply the susceptibility we've computed by the electrode area, 0.4 meter squared, the permittivity of free space, and divide by the electrode spacing, D, 15 centimeters. So the predicted change in capacitance is 1.5 picofarads. What change in voltage should we measure when the array is inserted? Here's what we predict. For our experiment, R sub S is 100 kilo ohms. The frequency F is 250 hertz. Delta C is 1.5 picofarads. And V is 400 volts RMS, or 566 volts peak. For this applied voltage, this change in capacitance should result in a change in voltage of 133 millivolts peak. Before balancing the bridge, we remove the array of ping pong balls. We've already set the driving voltage to about 400 volts RMS. Here are the resistors in the two upper legs of the bridge. They shunt the scope differential amplifier. So the scope signal is the voltage V sub zero. The balancing capacitance, C2, is here. This is the capacitor, C1, which is there for fine-tuning. We can balance the signal with this capacitor. So we tune C2 to null the bridge voltage. and C1 to fine-tune the null. We're ready to insert the artificial dielectric. As the array is inserted, the bridge becomes unbalanced indicating that the capacitance has changed. We measure a voltage of 135 millivolts peak. Remember, what we predicted was a change of 133 millivolts peak. The agreement is perhaps better than we should expect. Has the capacitance actually been increased by the insertion of the spheres? Let's try the experiment again. 
We can see that it has by looking at the balancing capacitor. Here, the array is out, and we balance the capacitor. Now, we insert the array. Note the position of the tuning capacitor plates. If the capacitance has been increased to balance the bridge, the knob must be turned so that they have greater area of overlap. The balancing capacitance is increased. So the artificial dielectric does increase the capacitance of the plane parallel capacitor. Our model for how the polarization of the spheres increases the capacitance appears to be a good one. It is because the individual spheres have a polarizability that we can calculate, and because they're well removed from each other, that we can predict the equivalent permittivity of the artificial dielectric. Insertion of the artificial dielectric increases the capacitance.